Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to go over case 1.3, which was uh, Mattel, uh, Mattel Inc. And we had three or four, I guess, four questions that we needed to answer. And all of it revolved around finding the um, 10K for 2013. I noticed in some of the answers that some folks, I think they may have chosen the wrong one. So first I'm going to search SEC Edgar and up comes our company search page and we want Mattel. Again, we're going to get a few things here, but we want the one here when we read it, it looks like stu do dolls and stuffed toys. So that's the one we want and that is indeed the right one. Let's filter this by 10K. And we want 2013, so let's choose a, a filing date. Um, let's see, uh, we'll do 2014 month. We'll do 03, 31, and then let's see what shows up. Boom! All right, and that gets us right to this one here. A filing date of February 26th of 2014, the 10K, that is most likely the one that we are going to be looking for. There is the 10K, the first one on the list. And we bring it up and look at the first line here. It says annual report for fiscal year ended December 31st, 2013. So we have the one we're looking for. So uh, the first question you had to tackle was asking basically what this company does. What does Mattel do? And um, so you should be able to find something that describes the business. And so um, here you have a discussion about what it does. And they have girls and boys brands, including Barbie, Fisher Price, American Girls. So we have a toy manufacturer. That's what we have. They basically manufacture, market, and sell. And so it says Mattel right up here. Mattel designs, manufactures, and markets a wide variety of toy products worldwide. And you can include or as much as a little bit. I would just kind of highlight that you know section right there. And you can even copy and paste right from it. And so that kind of answers the first question. Second question had multiple parts. Uh, they wanted to know which page the balance sheet was on. Well, we need to go to item number eight, financial statements and supplementary data. Uh, the first thing that pops up here, we've got on page 55, we've got management's report on internal control. Next is the report of the independent public accounting firm, which will come in handy in a second. But the very next thing up is the consolidated balance sheet, and that is on page 57. So that's the first thing we have. Then they want to know about the income statement. Well, that should follow the balance sheet in this case, and it does. So you've got the consolidated statement of operations. Remember I told you that they may call the financial statements something different. And so consolidated statement of operations is the same thing as the income statement. And so that is on page 58. We also have the consolidated statement of comprehensive income, which is the, the back end or a separate statement. Remember, they have the option of either combining the two statements or presenting them as two separate statements. So it appears here that they've chosen to present them as two separate statements. And so that is on page 59. So to get the answer right, you needed page 58 at a minimum. It would be nice if you recognized that both 58 and 59 referred back to the income statement. Then they want to know the statement of cash flows. And so that should come up after the statement of right here, boom, right after the comprehensive income. So they have the consolidated statement of cash flows. And you can take a look at it in detail, but for, for the purposes of this assignment, we just need the page number. So we have page number 60. Statement of stockholders' equity comes up, and that's the next page. And so you need page 61 for that. Then they wanted to know what pages the notes were on. And so the notes should come immediately after the financial statements. And so that starts right here, page 62. And so you can scroll all the way down if you want to. Uh, it may also be in the table of contents. But while we're here, we can just scroll down. It's not too bad. They will go on for quite some time before they finally end mercifully and let's 
let's see, where are we at here? 101. All right. So that says part three. So it looks like note 15 right there. Note 15 ends on page 102, and that is the end of the notes. So it's pages 62 to 102 inclusive. Those are the notes to the financial statements. F, item F, wanted to know about management's discussion and analysis. And so again, you can either go up to the, um, let's see, management's discussion and analysis, boom takes us to item number seven and it's page 27 is where it starts and then it goes on for a little ways again there's going to be a lot of summary information here and if I was a betting person I'm just going to say it's going to end right before another section that we just looked at and so there's 56 so there's 54 so we've basically got um, through page, boom, item 7a, looks like 51, non-gap matters. So that's the end of the management discussion and analysis. So it's pages 27 through 51 inclusive. And then they want to know about the summary of selected financial data. Summary of selected financial data. Again, we might start with the table of contents. And so they have this selected financial data. And that's item number six, and it's on page 26 of the report. So you would note page 26. The auditor's report, we've already seen that, and it was pretty close to um, where we were when we were looking at the financial statements and the notes. But you could come up here and you'll see the same thing. Um, click on the financial statements. Notice it's not specifically listed in the table of contents here. And so you just have to know that it should be aligned with the financial statements. And so there is the report of independent registered public accounting firm. And we have it reported on page 56. So the letter H is page 56. The question number three wants to know who basically performed the audit and issued the opinion. And you can see that at the bottom here. It's PricewaterhouseCoopers out of Los Angeles, California on February 26th of 2014, which also coincides with the date that this report was posted. The entire file was posted on that, around that date. All right, so then in question four, they want to know specific amounts. And so they start off wanting to know assets, liabilities, stockholders, equity. Those are all balance sheet numbers. And so they want to know total assets for the year in question. Well, that would be this number here, 6,439,626. Remember, these are in thousands, which means that to get the actual number, you'd have to multiply it by a thousand or add three zeros to it so these are some pretty big numbers they're talking about so at any rate so we've got assets of basically almost six and a half billion dollars worth of assets uh, for liabilities uh, they want to know all the liabilities so we've both got the current and the uh, non-current liabilities so our total current liabilities are uh, just over a billion dollars and then we have non-current liabilities of almost 2.2 or 2.15 billion dollars so you'd add those numbers together and you should come up with uh, 3 billion 188 million 67 thousand dollars in total liabilities stockholders equity well that number is down here that is 3 billion 251 million 559 thousand dollars in stockholders equity and again you could report the number as either uh, the millions or the billions your choice you just have to remember if the question was to come up what is the correct number it's reported in thousands and so you've got to add the three zeros so you are talking the right numbers uh, maybe when you're first doing this in the early days you may want to go ahead and note which one it is so this way you can write it up as the billions instead of the thousands um, or millions so you've already multiplied it by a thousand Let's see, um, then they want to know what the net sales were. So we need to go to the income statement for that. And they have the line net sales. So we can go right over there and we've got 6,484,892,000 dollars in net sales for the year. 
net income, well, we can look down there and we have $903,944,000 in net income. They want to know what happened to cash during the period, so we would go to our cash flow statement. And so what happened to cash during the period? Well, we had a decrease in cash because we have this uh, increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents of $296,495,000. So that's that line right there. And then they also want to know about retained earnings. And again, retained earnings is going to be in one of two places. You can pull it from the balance sheet. So you can look at the retained earnings balance here, which is $3,918,122,000. Uh, I believe we could also find it on the stockholders' equity. You can look at here, and if you come down to the bottom, the balance at December 31st, 2013, $3,918,122,000. And so... That is the answers to case 1.3. Again, it's just making sure. I think that some of you uh, where you missed may have been with like the liabilities. I know I saw some people had problems with the cash coming up with how much the cash increased or decreased. And some folks had problem picking out the right retained earnings number. For the most part, if you had the right financial statement year, uh, the year ending December 31st, 2013, you generally were in pretty good shape and most of your numbers were correct. So uh, in the future, just make sure you pay attention to which year financial statement you're pulling up, which, which 10K are you pulling up, so that you're working from the right year. And then after that, it's just a matter of being careful using the table of contents and then just reading the headings, the, the content headings within the 10K itself. So I hope that helps everybody. Make sure that you go over your case 1.3, that you understand uh, what you got wrong and why you got it wrong. And if you do have any other questions, you can certainly reach out to me by email or come and visit me during my office hours. You're also welcome to raise your hand and ask the question in class. We can always address it there. I do try to remember to bring the papers with me to class when I'm teaching. So everyone have a good day, and I will catch you later.